Richard, we're a couple of months into the, the new turf season. It must have been. How hard is it each year? Because last season we had a, you had a couple of Group 1 horses, Perfect Power, the Platinum Queen. You have to rebuild every year. You basically have to sign another Premier League team from scratch at the start of each season. How pleased are you with how things are going? Yeah, look, at the moment uh, it is frustrating. Platinum Queen and Perfect Power, two, two wonderful horses, you know, two champions in their own right, um, are gone. Well, they're not gone, but they're no longer in my care. Um, but luckily, every year we seem to we seem to be finding them. You know, I mean that's not just down to me. That's down to the whole sales team that go to the sales and dig dig these horses out. Uh, we're probably not in the top end of the market when we're buying. Uh, when you mention Premier League players, we're we're trying to buy Premier League players with probably first and second division money. But it happens, and we've just been lucky all my training career that we've always dug them out. But that's. That's down to the sales team, you know. Without, I, I do believe the biggest part about training horses is buying the right material, and it's probably comparing it to football, buying the right players. And uh, but this year we seem to have a, a cracking team of young horses there. Um, so hopefully we get some superstars out of that now. But uh, I'm sure there's some there. But I'm just not sure which ones yet. <laughs> How much has it changed? How big a part say the breeze ups play now compared to sort of five years ago? Yeah, there seems to be an awful lot of sales at the moment. Uh, I didn't go to Ireland this week there because I'd had three weeks at sales. It's it's a h huge part, but you tend to find you'll you'll accept a horse at the breeze up sales that you probably wouldn't accept as a yearling. Uh, when I say accept confirmation wise and and different things like that, but if the 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 horses do the time, you can't but look at them, you know. Uh, there is still an odd one that I'll look at that does a fast time that I just can't have as an individual. Um, but the breeze ups are working extremely well. Um, uh, you know they've got to do a time, so the boys have got to get stuck into them. So the ones that have gone through this and and, and headed to the breeze ups are are winning races because I'm not saying that some go by the wayside, but some will go by the wayside. They just can't take it. So the beauty about the breeze up is. We're not buying that horse. We know that they've done a certain certain amount and have taken it. So this is why it's been so successful, the breeze ups. And the cost of living crisis, I mean, it doesn't seem to be affecting the price of race horses. It seems to be as expensive as ever. <clears throat> it's incredible, really. Um, I mean, there's a huge investment from the Middle East now. You know, every state in, in the Middle East is, is very involved. The Americans are coming over buying them. The Australians are coming over buying them. Japanese are coming over buying them, which... They're not coming over buying the, the lesser ones, they're coming over buying the better ones, which ups the market for, for us lads. It's, it's, it sounds like I'm moaning, I am moaning, um, because the horses are getting more expensive, but it's simple why. Because uh, everybody wants the European, the English and Irish horse, and they're coming from all around the world to buy them. But as I say, they're not, they're not picking the mediocre ones, they're picking the best ones, so it, it does shove the market up. BHA trying to protect, keep more horses in this country, trying to do something around prize money, race programme, premiarisation, if I can say it, is the latest take, changes to the fixture list with that. What, what do you think? Are you, are you a fan? Uh, look, I, I, there's more intelligent people than me to answer that, but if they're thinking about it, they must have got the stats on it. And it you know, we've got to do something. Uh, the prize money is, for me, improving a lot. Uh, you know, you've got your, your Sunday series, you've got your... The, the racing league, you've got uh, different things like that. So there is great prize money for, for the mediocre horse. When I say the mediocre, the mid, middle of the range horse. Um, our big tracks, York and Ascot, are putting on bigger prize money for, for the very good horses. It's just the bottom end probably needs a little bit more money in it and it, it, it'll work, you know. Um, you know, I often hear people saying there that the prize money's better here, there and everywhere. But in England, we've got races for every type of horse. There's horses will win in England that probably wouldn't win in Ireland, if that makes sense. So it's either run in Ireland and win nothing or come to England where we've got a lot of racing, where there's opportunities. There's masses of opportunities, but if we can up the prize money, it'd be fantastic. And you have sold horses to Hong Kong. I mean, there's plenty of horses left Muslim Bank over the years to those new international territories where, where they come shopping for proven, proven performers. Yeah, it's, it's a great marketplace. It's frustrating uh, to, to lose them. But in, in Hong Kong, you did mention Hong Kong and the Middle East, the prize money there is fantastic. I don't th can ever even dream to think that we can ever get to them levels. But 
it's it's a good market for us to sell. We we we've sold a lot of horses for for over a million, which which is a lot of money, an awful lot of money, and it keeps our clients going. Especially the, you know, if you give them fifty grand and you get one point two million for one, well, it's 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 good business. It's good business for our owners. Talk about some of the horses for the for news. We need to start with Midnight Mile. Um, what did you make of a return in the news today? I was a fraction disappointed with the trainer that day. I, I, I genuinely thought she was going to stay on and finish second. Um, she just got a little bit tired. Uh, it's going to be a tough season for us. She's a Group 3 winner. and uh, my, my biggest key would be a, to try and win a Group 1, which, which will be tough. Um, but to get as much black type under, under our belt as possible. So... So the early season, there's not really races knocking me over to, to race in, so, but there is later on in the year. So, But uh, we're pleased enough. For it. I was happy enough, but disappointed that she, she got a little bit tired than I thought. Your flow to the Prix de Diane going into this, it's still on the uh, It looks an extremely warm race this year. Um, so I'll, I'll keep an eye on the race and just see. But I'm not saying she won't go, but uh, she's also in the Ribblesdale as well at Ascot, so we'll, we'll make that decision close to the time. Admiral Dee has been winning some of the big handicaps this spring. Yeah, he needs to drop down in grade and try and get his head in front and get his confidence. He's had a, he's had a tough assignment, but he runs the same race wherever we run him, six or seven. But I, I just do feel there is a little bit of an engine in there if we can just tune it and try, 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 and, try and get his head in front and get his confidence back. Where are you with Clear Point now? Clear Point's been extremely disappointing. Uh, I'd say extremely disappointing. He's a 90 rated well above average horse but we really thought he was the the real deal his work is always very solid and very good um i just want to keep him off the very fast ground it's crazy it's gone from sort of heavy which i don't think he really appreciated at first to, to fast but there is an engine there and hopefully we can uh, we can tune it and get him get him winning races Jinty didn't start the season well yeah he, he, had a, he had a good start he won three three races already this season uh, just a little bit outclassed the other day there, but uh, I think I think he'll find his, his level again just down in greater touch. Great state we've seen working this morning. Very impressive at yard last time. Yeah, he's he's a horse that just as a two-year-old we couldn't really get him right. There was nothing wrong with him, but he just wasn't pulling out great and not sort of sort of uh, getting consistency into. Him. But this year he's a completely different horse. Um, I did want to keep him for the handicap at Ascot, but. Uh, I'm afraid the handicap I had to say and shoved him up sixteen pound for winning the other day. But he's still progressive and, and he's he's quite a decent horse and gets his head down and knows how to win as well. So I'm looking forward to him. Probably run him in the scurries there, he'll have to carry a three pound penalty, but there's not a whole lot from for the next sort of six weeks, so we'll we'll go there and see what happens. Have secret run explain that London Girl Cup. I think it was the last horse off the bridle in that. Yeah, I was very pleased with his run. It was a frustrating race to watch, to be honest. We had two runners in it, and with 50 yards to go, we were first and second, and just sort of got wet sail down the outside with three other runners. But they've run good races. Uh, have secret. I'm going to give him a try at Ascot in the mile and a half. We've always felt in the back of our mind he might stay. I read somewhere there that he didn't stay a mile and a quarter. Well, he won a mile and a quarter as a two-year-old, so you'd imagine a mile and a half there might just be up the street. So we're going to have a crack at Ascot, give the owners a day out. Marine Wave. Yeah, tough, very genuine. Uh, I thought she ran a good solid race at Chelmsford. Um, she's quite quick. She's got quicker this year. But main thing would be just keep keep topping up the black type. And uh, she's got two bits of it now. So uh, I'm sure by the end of the season she'll have more. And it'd be just great to win a, win a listed or a, or a group race with her. What about No Nay Nikki? Yeah, she's a very frustrating filly. She's a filly we really like. Uh, I, I really fancied her at York, but... She got turned sideways very early in the race and just never got back into it. She's an extremely well handicapped filly, but things have to drop right, and I think her day will come. And how pleased are you with Ramazan and his return at the Danton Good, solid run now. Uh, he'd done well over the winter. He's quite porky now when he went to the races, but travelled well, just a little bit too much daylight, but he'll go for the Britannia, so uh, he, I think the Britannia will suit him down to the ground, flat out pace, and... Ride him with a bit of confidence and he, he'll, he'll come home. Whether he comes home in front, we'll see. <laughs> what about Rousing Encore? Rousing Encore has been disappointing. I'm uh, just a little bit worried he may be overachieved as a, as a two-year-old. When I say that, he was second in the Mill Reef and was carrying a big rating. But he's down to 97 there. I'll probably head for the sprint handicap at York and hopefully he'll find his mark. But he's a very genuine, honest horse that's uh, 
he's just been finding it tough in the upper tiers, but uh, hopefully uh, back handicapping might suit him. And how pleased were you with Spirit Dancer's return at York? I thought he ran a mighty race. I was very pleased with him. Uh, he'd had a little bit of a setback last year, um, and he'd got very fat over the winter. I mean, huge. Um, and I sent him the race. It's probably the fattest I've ever sent a horse. And I could see they were fancying him, and I thought, well, I can't have him at all. But to be fair, he ran a good solid race and just got tired at, at the wrong time, which is the end of the race. But he'll improve a ton for that. So he's still on the up, which is incredible, really. Uh, and something like a John Smith, something like that. And we might uh, have a look at a handicap at Ascot as well. Fantastic. Strike Red? Strike Red is Strike Red. He had a great season last year. Um, I thought he ran all right. He heads to Epsom. Now, Epsom is a law to itself. I don't know whether he'll like it or he won't. Um, but we'll give him a go. But we'll, we'll run him in all the big handicaps and hopefully win one. When he arrived last got one from last year, the Riddler. Yeah, it's been extremely disappointing. Neil felt he, he went wrong the other day. First run on heavy ground, he was too keen. Seven furlongs is not a trip, but... Neil felt he, he went wrong there the other day, but straight after the race he trotted up sound and uh, Neil even came back and apologised and said, look, I thought he'd gone wrong. We can't find anything wrong with him, so uh, we'll just carry on. He is in the Commonwealth Cup, but I'd say he'll be he'll be taken out today. And Vintage Climate, you've got in the dash at Epsom. He's shown one or two signs this season that he, he might be about to fire again. Yeah, he's uh, he ran well at Edinburgh. Just things didn't go right. They didn't go quick enough the other day at Ripon. He loves them to go flat out. Now, whether it's Epsom flat out, we'll see. But he is quite a pacey horse. But it's a race. I'm not sure if he'll get in. I hope he does get in because uh, it's a race I've kept him for. So, fingers crossed.